Let's turn today to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 23. We were considering in our last study, towards the end of it, how Jesus was against his disciples using any type of religious title. And that's very important, because we may think that's a small thing, whether we use titles or not. But the Word of God says, don't lean upon your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all your heart. In other words, it's better to follow what God's Word says and not use our own reason to consider whether something is important or not. Jesus said, the one who disobeys the smallest commandment and teaches other people that that's trivial is going to be considered the least in the kingdom of God. But the one who keeps and teaches others to keep will be considered great in God's kingdom. And so, it's very important for us to consider this passage. In Matthew 23, in verse 7 onwards, he speaks about the Pharisees loving, respectful greetings in the marketplaces, wanting to be called rabbi. And he said, you shouldn't be called rabbi because only one is your teacher. You are all brothers. Don't seek for any title. And don't call anyone on earth your father. He's talking about the religious title father. Of course, we have physical earthly fathers and to call them daddy or father is right. But here he's speaking about a religious title. Only one is your father. God is your father. And as a religious title, we must not call anyone father or allow ourselves to be called by that title by anybody else. That's contrary to God's word. It's contrary to the teaching of Jesus. Now, it's very interesting that as far as we know, in that particular time, there was no religious leader among the Jews who was wanting to be called father. That was a prophetic word concerning the future. As Jesus looked into the future, he knew that there'd be a whole lot of religious priests and leaders who'd want other people to call them father. And Jesus spoke against that and said, Do not call anyone on earth your father. How many people take that seriously? People say, Oh, we don't want to offend someone. But then you're going to offend God. You're going to offend Jesus whose word is very clear, do not call anyone by that religious title. For God is your father. And there we can see the blasphemy of people who want to be called holy fathers, etc. Do not be called leaders. It's amazing. You seek to be known and called as a leader? Even that, Jesus said, avoid. One is your leader. That is Christ. But the greatest among you shall be your servant. So, Jesus said that we had a right to be known only by two titles. Verse 8, brothers. Verse 11, servants. Every one of us can be brothers and servants of others. And if you want a title, choose either or both of these two. Brother and servant. Any other title is contrary to the teaching of Jesus and exposes us to Phariseeism. If this matter of titles was a very small thing, as some of us think, then Jesus wouldn't have spent so much time explaining it to the disciples and the Holy Spirit wouldn't have wasted all those verses putting it down in Scripture. It's because man doesn't like to face up to the reality of what Jesus has proclaimed that he uses his own reason and says the use of titles in Christendom is a trivial thing. It's not trivial, brother. It's serious because it's disobedience to the word of Jesus. Many don't like to face it. That's because many don't like to face the truth. They are far more interested in avoiding offense to men than in avoiding offense to God. They are far more interested in pleasing men than in pleasing God. And therefore they never arrive at the truth. There is so much compromise in Christendom today that people gloss over the commands of Jesus. Yet Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples and teach them to obey every single thing 
I've commanded you. That's what we read in the last verse of Matthew. And this is one of the things written in Matthew. Teach them to do every single thing that I've commanded you. And that's the purpose of a program like this, to teach people to do every single thing that Jesus commanded. Further, Jesus said in verse 12, And whoever exalts himself shall be humbled. He went on to say that the use of titles is a way of exalting yourself. And if you continue along that way, God will humble you finally. And of course, we can exalt ourselves in other ways. There are many ways of exalting ourselves in pride. The way you despise somebody else, that would be pride too. You may not have a title, but you can despise somebody who has, and then you've exalted yourself. And then God has to humble you. It's so easy for pride to come in, that if we don't look at Jesus and keep ourselves in humility, we shall exalt ourselves. We can say just like that in, in the world, there's a law of gravity that keeps pulling us down. In the spiritual realm, we can say there's a law of anti-gravity that keeps pulling us up so that we want to exalt ourselves and appear more spiritual than we are and all of that. And God humbles such people. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The way to be exalted by God is to go down and humble yourself. What men think of you is absolutely unimportant. What God thinks of you is all important. In fact, that's everything. If God sees that you're humble, he will exalt you. If you humble yourself, he will exalt you over sin. That's the first thing we need to be exalted over, not over people. I hope none of us have a desire to be exalted over people. The first thing we need to be exalted over is the lust in our flesh that we don't serve them. We've been slaves and we've been ruled by our lust for so many years and they have ruled us and controlled us. Now God says we can be exalted over them. Sin shall not be the ruler over you. You shall be exalted. But how shall we come to that exaltation? By humility. Because God gives his grace to the humble. And he went on to say further to the Pharisees in verse 13, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut off the kingdom of heaven from men. You do not enter in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. This is another characteristic of the Pharisees, that they do not allow others to hear the truth. They themselves didn't want to hear the truth that Jesus preached, but they wanted to discourage other people from coming and hearing that truth as well. And you find that's the mark of Pharisees even today. That even though they are not interested, they do not seek. They do not seek themselves and they do not allow others to enter that kingdom. They do not want others to be exposed to the truth that will set people free from sin. You do not allow those who are entering to go in. How many people there are like that today who are not interested in a message that leads to godliness and hinder others from receiving that message also? That's another characteristic of Pharisees, and Jesus called them hypocrites. Further, we read in verse 14, Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you devour widows' houses. Even while for a pretense you make long prayers, therefore you shall receive greater condemnation. What were they doing? Poor widows who were living in their houses, they would turn them out if they were not able to pay the rent one month. They were unmerciful. And for a pretense to cover it all up, they made long prayers. They would be unmerciful to helpless widows. God is the God of the widows. And many times in the Old Testament we read that God is on the side of the helpless. And if you have power over someone, beware, because you're in great danger. If you use that power to exalt yourself, 
and try to cover all that up with long prayers. God's not interested in long prayers if there's not a life of mercy behind that long prayer. If you're not merciful to people who are weaker and more helpless than you are, all your long prayers count for nothing. There's a lot of difference between being religious and being spiritual. A lot of people don't understand that difference. A lot of people think that to be spiritual is to go for a lot of meetings and pray a long time and know a lot of the Bible. But Jesus exposed that type of religion as hollow if it was not backed by a life of mercy and goodness and humility in our attitude to other people. All that is useful only if it's backed up by a life of godliness. Otherwise, it's religiosity, not spirituality. And the thing about the Pharisees was that they were religious. Think of this. It says in verse 15 that, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you travel about on sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. Who are these people traveling across sea and land? Do you know that these Pharisees were missionaries? That means they gave up their jobs in order to serve the Lord. And one would think that someone who gives up his job to serve the Lord must be making a tremendous sacrifice. But Jesus exposed the hypocrisy of these pharisaical missionaries when he said, you people travel land and sea to make one convert. Well, what type of convert have you made with all your sacrifice? You've made a convert just like yourself. You made another Pharisee. You fellows are bound for hell, he said, and you made another person double a child of hell. Why is he called double a child of hell? He was already a child of hell to start with before you met him. But now, even though he's not really converted, you told him he is. And he's become double a child of hell because he imagines now that he's converted when he's not. He imagines that he's on his way to heaven when he's on his way to hell. He was safer earlier on when he was on his way to hell and knew it. Now he's in a more dangerous condition because he's on his way to hell, but he thinks he's going to heaven. It's a very dangerous condition to get into. The Pharisees are in the world today as well. And we have to be careful that we're not deceived by them and we don't end up like that ourselves.